Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is video series one, part four. In this part, I would like to share with you a few examples how some fundamental problems in biology and anthropology are solved. Let me start in the context of the history of biology. In bad case, in the ancient Greece thought that living species that could adapt themselves to the environment would survive. It is a kind of natural evolution. I thought, thought that complex living beings come from simple living beings with purpose. He insists that the existence of living beings and part of a living beings is with purpose. It means that the evolution of living being is with predefined purpose. In practice, I thought killed the idea of natural evolution and set a ceiling for biology. Then come Darwin. Only based on very limited experience and observations, Darwin proposed his theory of natural evolution. After the publication of Darwin's evolution theory, there were lots of discussions of his theory in biology, politics, especially in religions. But there was no philosophic discussion on it. The evolution theory of Darwin has two cornerstones. They are the natural selection law and the adaption of living beings to environmental changes. But both of them need a solid theoretical foundation in philosophy. But it's not there. One of the consequences is that the evolution theory of Darwin has become a kind of belief or not belief. I try to understand the origin of life and the evolution of living species. It was a long journey. I spent many chapters on it in my book. Finally, I built a solid foundation for biology and anthropology. In the new philosophy systems, the theoretical foundations of biology and anthropology are simple. In the new theory, each existence and its changes are governed by the four wheels of the existence and their changes. The uniqueness of biology is that it is driven by the will of individual efficiency. A biological process can only take place when the will of individual efficiency of an existence is strong enough. High individualism is responsible for the orange of life, creation of a new living species, creation of the mankind, and the only evolution of the mankind. On the other side, high group interaction is responsible for disappearance of living species and some mankind groups. I would like to mention that the DNA is the main carry of the four wheels of living beings and the four original wheels of the mankind. The carries of four wheels of mineral materials is the material itself. This difference explains 
many differences in property between living beings and the mineral materials. The following two themes in the new philosophy theory are important for Darwin's evolution theory. First, asymmetry carries fundamental messages. Second, every animal has a unique comprehending capability. It is governed by the wills of living beings. In general, the comprehending capability of a female is higher than that of a male. With these two senses in mind, the evolution theory of Darwin is easy to understand. First, the natural selection of Darwin. The definition of Darwin is that the differential survival and the reproduction of individuals due to difference in phenotype. The new theoretical explanations are, first, the phenotype of an animal is the observation of the symmetries on the body of the animal. Second, the symmetries on animal body are a reflection of the degree of the will of individual efficiency and the will of group efficiency of the animal. The natural selection is therefore governed by the will of individual efficiency and the will of group efficiency of the animal. These two wills are crucial for the survival and reproduction of individual animals. Now the adaption of living beings to changing environment. The new theoretical explanation is as the following. First, the female, if any, sense the needed adaption by using her high comprehending capability and translate the information to the chemicals in her eggs. Second, chemicals are responsible in the reproduction process to recombine DNAs from eggs and sperm for next generation. The high comprehending capability of a female is therefore essential for the adaption of living beings to changing environment. The relative high ca comprehending capability of females explain also the difference between female and the male in their behaviors. For the human being in general, the comprehending capability of an individual is driven by the original wills of the individual. On the other hand, the social wills of the human society can suppress the original wills. This means that the human society can influence negatively the reproduction process of the human being and the evolution of the mankind. In the new philosophy theory, the four wills of living beings impact the result of their reproduction. I list the four typical results from the reproduction process of a living species here. First, balanced four wheels leads to balanced reproduction. You see on the drawing on top left. Second, strong will of individual efficiency leads to strong evolution and the creation of a new species. 
city john on top right third strong will of group efficiency leads to quantitative expansion of the spaces see the draw in both left the last strong will of group disaster leads to extinction of the species see the joy in bottom right a strong will of group efficiency would build automatically a strong will of group disaster it means that strong will of group efficiency leads to the extinction of the species in the end this model explains the creation survival extinction of living species in a history such as single cell bacteria, dinosaur, pterosaur, and the creation of the main kind. I examined the biology history on Earth in a big chapter in my book. I will share with you more information in part 9 of video series 2. In the new philosophy theory, the process for the creation of the mankind is roughly as the following. First, the ancestors of the mankind had a unique combination of strong will of individual happiness and weak will of group efficiency. Second, a relative strong will of group disaster of the nature was released. When this happened, the will of group disaster of our ancestor was magnified. A large proportion of the will of group disaster of our ancestor was converted into their will of individual happiness and individual efficiency. The strong will of individual efficiency led to the creation of the mankind. This process was repeated a few times. In short, the mankind was created from its high individual ancestors in proper natural disasters, most likely during volcanic disruptions. The archaeological finding support this explanation. After the creation, the mankind has four reasonably balanced wills, but the mankind maintains a relatively strong individualism. One part of the mankind maintained relatively strong individualism and the conquered whole world. The other part of the mankind got strong will of group efficiency and disappeared. The modern human society emphasizes on the social will of group efficiency. It has huge consequences for the mankind and the human society. I will explain this later. In a new philosophy theory, the human DNA keeps the mankind as the mankind. The human DNA is the carry of the four original wills of the mankind and of each human being. The continuation of the time clock of living being in each human being. The original comprehending capability of each human being. The basic characteristics of each human being. The fertility, the energy, love, and creativity of each human being. Up to now, the mankind is very lucky because 
the change of human DNA can only take place during the human reproduction process. The speed of the impact of the human society on the mankind itself is relatively low. I should also mention that in a new philosophy theory, risks and diseases are an intrinsic part of the properties of the human being because the will of a group disaster always exists. It doesn't make sense to try to eliminate all risks and diseases. If you would have succeeded in remove one, you would get a new one. This is what we have seen in the last few hundred years in the history. The discovery of DNA is great, but the further research on DNA is mostly on its applications. One of the techniques is to modify the DNA of living species to prevent diseases. Some people now want to extend this kind of DNA application to the human being to prevent diseases or even extend the lifetime. The question is, does the world understand what does human DNA really mean for the mankind? No, nobody, not biologists, not philosophers. In the previous slides, I have shared with you the key roles of the human DNA in keeping the mankind as the mankind. Up to now, the mankind is very lucky because the change of human DNA can only take place during the human reproduction process. The speed of the impact of human society on the mankind itself is relatively low. Now you want to speed up the change you don't understand. I would expect that genetical manipulation of the human DNA would reduce the intrinsic individualism and increase the intrinsic group interaction of the mankind. It may downgrade the mankind to low end animals such as ants and fishes. The genetic manipulation of the human DNA is therefore the most serious crime against the mankind in the history. It should be absolutely prohibited. The new philosophy theory can also explain some complex phenomena in our daily life. Let me share with you a few examples. First, the human DNA carries the original wheels and the time clock of the mankind for each human being. It keeps baby energetic and pure regardless of the spiritual status and the age of their parents. The universal law of will conversion ensures a seminal pattern of growth and aging for all human beings. Second, the new time and the space definition in a new theory explains our time feeling. For instance, when you are concentrated on something, your clock will slow down, you feel time passed quickly. In the new philosophy theory, love between two persons is a result of intensive exchange of the will of individual happiness and the will of individual efficiencies between the two persons. It generates a special link between the mind of two persons. 
Also in the new philosophy theory, information could be exchanged between two parties without a time sequence in between. It explains quantum entanglement. It explains also some phenomena in the nature and the activities of the human mind. One of them is the merging of similar ideas in two persons who had intensive discussion and then separated. I wish I or someone else could use the new philosophy theory to explain more complex phenomena in a daily life. Philosophy should serve the people. With this remark, I would like to close part four of video series one. Thank you for your attention.